three, two, one, go, right? All right, good morning, guys. We're waiting for a couple more of our classmates, but we're almost all here. So please read through this start slide. Our KA update, that's essentially what you could put in your plan book, right? So our math for this week is due December 11th. So what you could put in your plan book is math this week, your KA due December 11th. It really doesn't need to take up much space in your plan book, just KA due December 11th. All right, so um, community help docs still exist. Please use it. There's been a few of you that show up to get help, and I say, well, you haven't checked the community help doc because I know this problem's on there. Um, if you do want to come get help, though, Math Lab is at 820 every day pretty much. Um, Tuesday, Thursday tend to be Math 7, like, priority, but we'll do whatever work for whoever shows up on the day. So that's why I'm just saying daily. Right, Tuesday, Thursday is your primary for Math 7, but you can come any day, right? Monday and Wednesday, I lean towards Math 8 because I kind of tell them not to show up other days. Sorry, I just realized my one camera is totally in the way. That looks a little weird. A camera pointing at a camera. All right, so this is what I had marked for how far we made it, that we didn't do this problem. So somebody tell me if I'm wrong. Have we done this problem yet? Have we talked about rates and unit rates? Somebody unmute and help me remember, sorry, one of your classmates is texting me saying that they think they're trying to get in, but it's not letting them. So I'm trying to make sure they're trying to get to the right link. Come on, email. All right, so assuming that none of you are saying like, hey, we did this, I'm guessing we didn't. So let's head our paper with rates, and you could even say rates or unit rates, but a rate, the first thing we wanna write down is that a rate is the comparison between two values. So I'm gonna date my paper 12.7 for you guys up here. 12.7, this is 1A when we, finally got to this. Guys, we're a little bit behind, so I'm going to start to speed up a tiny bit. I, I might um, kind of back and forth with my attention because I'm trying to get a couple of your classmates in here and try to make sure that they're in class. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm recording it so I could send it to them as well. So a rate is a comparison between two values. Like when people are driving, like your parents, they might drive past like a police officer or something and be like, ooh, I was going... And they might talk about how fast they were going. How do we normally talk about speed? Who can unmute and tell us how we normally talk about speed? If they're like, oh no, I was going 80... Miles per hour. Yeah, miles per hour. Right? So they wouldn't tell you how many miles they were going in two hours. Right? They would tell you how many miles they were going in one hour. So before we even jump into that problem that I have ready for us there, we're going to look at... Well, okay, so... Instead of going 60 miles in two hours, we want to talk about how far we go in one hour. That is a unit rate. So the unit rate is where the denominator value, or really like the second value. Sorry, I'm trying to get my camera to flatten out and get focused. The denominator is one. So guys, go ahead and get all this work written down to turn that 60 miles in two hours into our unit rate turns into 30 miles per one hour. Hey, will somebody else try to unmute? It says it's not let it, well, Nate says it won't let him unmute. Interesting. 
Nate, you can try to leave and come back if you want. Um, as always, I'm recording, so it'll be okay. Any questions on the math I did to get this to a, a 1 on the bottom? I said, how do I get from a 2 to a 1? I can divide by 2. I do the same in the numerator. We get to 30 miles per hour. And that's, if you see things in like MPH or anything like that, that P is almost always per. And what does per tell us to do? Per tells us to divide. Right, so if you want to make a reminder on your notes here, Per tells us to divide. Oh, reminder that I think was on our start slide. 78% is fine for the unit test. I put that announcement up um, this morning on Khan as well. 78 is fine for the unit test. If you get to 78%, you can leave it there. So the next problem that we're going to look at, and I'm going to move my screen back in just a second, is that Emmanuel, I don't know what just happened there. Emmanuel was charged $32 for a 14 and 2 ninths kilometer taxi ride. So they tell us, what is the cost per kilometer? Nate, that's all right. You might just have to work through the chat right now. It's probably a feature of your computer. Or who knows, maybe you like, I don't know, Mr. Cabilo or Mr. Estes maybe got mad and like changed your Zoom settings. I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, you might just have to do class through the chat right now. So if we try to set this up to make the denominator of 1, well, we got to say, what do we want 1 of? It tells us per kilometer. So we want 1 kilometer. So what we're going to write down is the important information. Everyone show me your pencil really quickly. You should be able to just lift your hand and your pencil should be in it. Sweet. Thank you. So we're writing down $32. I wrote down his name to remember what problem we're working on. Because guys, remember, the problems I do in our lessons, especially now that we're back in remote, I'm trying to make um, be the problems that you see in Khan Academy. So some of the problems that we do today, actually, I, I will just say all of them come from Khan Academy. You might see them when you're doing your homework. You might not because I've, I've randomized the problems. So you want to make sure that you write all this down, even the people's names, because they don't switch the names in Khan Academy. If they switch the numbers, then the name changes. So if you see different numbers, you're going to see a different name. And if you see a different name, you're going to see a different number. So guys, what I always write down first is what they asked for. They ask for dollars per kilometer. Per tells us to... Yeah. Thank you, Mia. I'm trying to give you guys a chance to like unmute and talk. So if we set up division, well, this is the annoying thing. $32, and I'm going to go ahead and write it out here so we can see it again. $32 divided by 14 and 2 ninths. Guys, if we try to make that a decimal, it's repeating. Sorry that my notes are a little bit random with because when I did it with the other class, I was kind of writing in different spots. But 14 and 2 ninths is a messy fraction. It, it's really a messy mixed number. So if I make it a improper fraction, it's 128 ninths, right? If we make it an improper fraction, we would do 9 times 14, then add the 2. Hey, Isaiah, I, I doubt there's anything you can do about the window being behind you, but can you tip your screen down so I might be able to see your, your face a little bit more? So I might be able to tell if things make sense or not. Thanks, bud. It's just like we do use the fact that we can see your cameras. And like I've told you guys, my setup here, I can see all of you at the same time as when I teach. So it helps me see like if you're making a face, like, it normally tells us what we said doesn't make sense. That's all we're really trying to do. We're not trying to see who's got the best hairstyle today. And guys, I'm assuming we're using calculators, right? 
I haven't had the question in a while, which is a good thing, of kids saying, am I allowed to use a calculator? Yes. Unless I say no, you're allowed to use a calculator. So, if we plug this in our calculator, because I'm not going to do that math by, by hand, watch what happens though, guys. I'm going to get the wrong answer. That's the wrong answer. Watch. Please watch my screen for a minute. Lacey, what did I do wrong? It was 32 divided by 128 divided by 9, which is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This is different than this. Exactly what Lacey just said. I did 32 divided by 128 divided by 9. That's not what we're doing. We're doing 32 divided by the mixed number in the bottom. So these parentheses are very important when we go into the calculator. Or if we want another way to like check our work and check our answers, we have a number divided by a fraction. We can just keep change flip, guys. If we wanted to, we could keep change flip this and we could set up how do we solve it through multiplication. So if we do keep change flip, we could, you don't have to do this, but we could get to nine fourths, which is the same as the right answer that I got of 2.25. So what that tells us is our answer will have the label that they asked us for. So that is dollars per one kilometer. Does that make sense? Stella, you're talking, but I'm assuming it's to yourself. This is kind of a complicated problem because I wanted to show you guys like a tough one and then come back a little bit, right? Like pull it back in the difficulty. So please make sure you have this written down. I'm going to go and shut the wall really quickly because um, I think Mrs. Pettigrew is jamming to Christmas music and I just, my brain is getting a little distracted. I'll be right back. All right, it was weirding me out because it was sounding like the sound was coming from Rose's room. Um, I don't know what you guys know about acoustics, but there's not much to soak up the sound right now. So Mrs. Pettigrew's music from her phone was bouncing all the way over to here. Let's try another one. If Francine uses two-thirds cup of orange juice and one-third cup of... Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. Two-thirds pineapple and one-third cup of orange juice, then to set that up to get how many cups of pineapple for one cup of OJ, what goes on bottom, orange juice or pineapple juice? Somebody unmute and shout it out. What goes on bottom? Orange juice, thank you, because that's what we want one of. So the first thing I would write on my paper is I want pineapple over orange. The first thing we would write on our paper is that we want pineapple over... In the end, we want one orange, but we're not going to start with that. So what we start with is the, the values given to us, right? They tell us two-thirds of pineapple, one-third of orange. Is anyone confused about anything that I have written here? Sorry, I'm trying to get my paper to be able to slide up further. Is anyone confused? Ah, ah, ah. I didn't mean for you to see that yet. All right, I'll go ahead and just show it. Sometimes I think it's easier if you guys can see everything and write it down and then we talk about it. So go ahead and just write this down for a moment, then we'll talk. I'll try to be quiet for a minute. We do have a little bit of catching up to do, so that's why I'm trying to move quickly today.
All right, if anyone were to guess the one Christmas song that Mrs. Pettigrew's listening to, do you have a guess? If I say Mariah Carey, does that ring any bells? Maybe one of the most classic Christmas songs ever. Yeah, I see a couple people singing it. All I want for Christmas is you, baby. I have a really great voice that only sounds bad because we're on Zoom, right? There's my defense. It's, my voice is beautiful. It's Zoom that makes me sound bad. All right, guys, so the math that we did here, hopefully that was enough time for you to get a little bit of this written, was we set up the cups of pineapple juice on top and the cups of orange juice on bottom. One way to solve it is to say, how do I turn my denominator into a one, which here is not that bad. How many thirds does it take to make a one? Three. So we multiply by three in the denominator, which consequently tells us we have to do the same thing in the top. When we multiply by three there, we get six over three, which can reduce to two, which tells us two cups of pineapple juice for every one cup of orange juice. The other option is to take the keep, change, flip route, keep the pineapple juice the same, change division to multiplication, flip the second fraction, and that will still give us 6 over 3, which reduces out to 2. So that is 2 cups of pineapple juice. and one cup of OJ. Any questions? What if I turn this around and say, okay, if I want one cup of pineapple juice, Can anyone tell me if I had only one cup of pineapple juice, how much would I have of OJ? How do I go from two to one? Yeah, if we flip this around... Guys, we can turn this around and make pineapple the one because we can say, we can flip this over and say one half cup of OJ for every one cup of pineapple. This is also true, right? It's the same thing just flipped over. Instead of two to one, it's like it's one half, right? It's like one to two. So we essentially flipped it over. Instead of two to one, it's like one to two, except one half to one. All right, we got to keep rolling. Any questions on that one? Otherwise, we need to keep moving on. But please stop me and ask a question if you got it. Try this one on your own. We want to figure out at this rate, how many dresses does Lucy sew in one hour? Hour is our one. Hour is our single. So hour should go on top or bottom. If hours is the thing we want one of, would that go on top or bottom? Bottom. The thing we want one of goes on bottom. So guys, the first thing you should set up, and I'm not going to do this for you. I'm just making sure you set this up right. First thing you should set up is dresses over hours. Like just make a little note of that somewhere on your paper. You want dresses over top of hours.
Oh, my bad. Thank you for saying that. Lucien, looks like you finally got here. It's okay if we can't turn our camera on. I'm just hoping that you're actually here. I will still email you the link because you missed the first, like, 20 minutes or so. So, Lucian, it's going to make more sense when you go back and watch the video, but what we're talking about right now is how to create rates and unit rates, and a unit rate wants one on the bottom, like the value of one on the bottom. So this problem that we're looking at right here gives us two fractions. One is for an amount of a dress, and one is for an amount of an hour. And they tell us at this rate, how many dresses does Lucy sew in one hour? So we were just discussing, we want to put one hour on the bottom, which means that when we start filling in our information, well, they told us four-sevenths dresses in three-fourths hours. So what we're going to fill in is going to be four-sevenths over three-fourths. Like, guys, again, there are two, well, probably more than two, but there are two good options here. One of them is saying, how do I turn three-fourths into one? And we know that if we can get a number over itself, that's not what I'm meaning to do, my apologies. If we can get a number over itself, it becomes what? What is a number over itself? Any number over itself. One. So if I can turn this into 12 over 12, and I'm probably going to zoom in for a minute. Yeah, that's better. So we could multiply by the reciprocal. Guys, if you're going to put this in your notes, please put the word reciprocal. So to the denominator, we multiply its reciprocal. That will get us 12 over 12. But remember, we got to do that on top and bottom. Is there any question on the work that I have showing right now? Guys, it's going to warm up this week in case you didn't know that. By Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to be back up in the 40s. Sorry, this is your little weather update with Mr. Hudson. Show high up, it just pick a season. Nah, I like the back and forth. It was a little warmer yesterday, so I took that, that chance to stack some firewood. That is not warm. Nate, were you born in Ohio or were you born somewhere else? Because 40 for Ohio at winter, that's kind of warm. Okay, so that is, is the weather in Tawa Taiwan? So Nate and I are kind of chatting with him in the text. Okay, it's always warm over there. That makes sense. So if in Taiwan it's always warm, then of course you feel cold here. All right, guys, so back to the math. I just wanted to give you guys time to write. This is messy, this 1621st. So we literally just leave our answer like that. And instead of writing it as like a big old fraction... And this is actually what we call a complex fraction, right? Because there's a fraction in a bigger fraction. We just write 16 ersts dresses per hour. If we try to put that in our calculator to get a decimal, it's not any better. Ugh, it's worse. That's gross. So just leave it in fraction form. 16 21st dresses per hour. Now what this really can mean also... Well, dresses was our numerator and hours was our denominator. Guys, if we wanted to, what this also means is 16 dresses would take her how long to make? If we had dresses on top and hours on bottom in this whole situation, if I put 16 on top, what should be on bottom? 21 hours? Yeah. 21 hours. So guys, that's another way that we can talk about this problem is, okay, it's 1621st dresses per hour, but a nicer way we could talk is say, okay, if she makes 16 dresses, 
it will take her 21 hours. And that's like half of a work week, right? A, a work week, if you've ever talked to your parents, is normally about 40 hours. And same for you guys with being students. You're in school about 40 hours a week. So this is about half of a work week. So in a work week, she could make about 30, right? If we double both of these, she could make about 30 dresses in a work week, which is pretty impressive. Questions? Guys, a lot of us are behind on our con work, and then you start asking questions that are old, and I, I just like really wonder why we didn't ask them in class, right? Please, I know it's weird through Zoom, but guys, you can chat it to me, right? Put it in the chat if you have a question that you don't want to ask to the whole class. Put it in the chat. Just check that your chat says to me privately. So then if we have a situation like this, where they ask us, well, here I'll ask you guys, what should be on bottom, kilometers or hours? Read this and tell me what should be on bottom. Hours, hours should be on bottom, absolutely. Please go ahead and try to solve this on your own. Now, what's messy here is we have a mixed number. And guys, I can tell when some of you are sitting and doing nothing and just waiting. At a minimum, you should have written down kilometers over hours, right? Because we all said hours is going to be on bottom. What do I need to do? There we go. I was trying to figure out what to do with my camera. So kilometers over hours, then we fill in the numbers that we have. Three and one-sixth is our amount of kilometers. One-fourth is our amount of hours. Three and one-sixth is messy, though, so make it an improper. So for what I have shown right here, so I'm moving my camera a little bit so I can see the rest of the notes. For what I have shown right here, does anyone have questions? So then we figure out how to do the math to get us to one hour. How do I turn a one-fourth that's on bottom into a one? Well, we multiply by four. Once we get our value over one, we can now write it as just the value of the numerator, but what does this tell me my label is? And the problem tells me what my label is too, but yes, kilometers per hour. So guys, we're going to take that 38 thirds and try to simplify it. And if we do, if we make it into a mixed number, it becomes 12 and 2 thirds, right? Because we take 38 thirds and we make it 36. So 36 divided by three, uh, three is 12. Two divided by three is two more thirds. I, whoever's talking, I cannot, Stella, I cannot hear you. Where did what come from? 30, oh, 76 over 6. Sorry, 76 over 6 became 38. Sorry, what I didn't say out loud is since both of these are even, thank you for catching me on that. Since both of these are even, we can divide by 2 and divide by 2. So that's what we did up here, is we divided them both by 2.
other questions on this problem, please. Stella, thank you very much for asking that. I'm going to keep my work up, but have you try one more on your own. You can't see the whole yeah, that's, I'm still trying to scooch like, and figure out what's best. There, you can still see most of my work there. Now this one's weird, and this is why I wanted to like wrap up this part of the conversation with this problem. It tells us the ferry traveled one sixth of the distance between the ports. So they're not giving us miles or kilometers or anything like that. They give us one sixth of the distance In how long of time? Yeah, three-sevenths of an hour. So, guys, the first thing we should have written down is one-sixth of the distance in three-sevenths of an hour. But then look at what the question's asking to figure out what goes in the denominator. What goes in the denominator? Some of you have realized that it's much faster if you unmute. Yes, thank you, Isis. Hours, right? So what I'm going to write down first is just no numbers. We first write down what goes over what. So this is abbreviation for distance. So we know hours goes on bottom. Guys, look at your problem. They want one hour. One always goes on bottom. One. Now, it's not one right now, but that's what we want. One always goes on bottom. So now we set up, well, the distance was one-sixth. The hours was three-sevenths. Who can tell me what we're going to do on top and bottom or what route you're going to take instead? Ooh, love it. Multiply by the reciprocal. Now, if somebody still wants to tell me what else we could do, we'll do that in just a second. So we do that on top and bottom. The reciprocal is 7 thirds, right? This becomes 21 over 21, which is good because that's the one that we want. This 1 times 7, 7, 6 times 3, 18. So our answer would be 7 eighteenths of the distance per, right, that per tells us there was division involved, per hour, which we know is 1. We don't have to say the 1, but we know when we say per hour, that's per 1. What's the other route that we could take when we see a fraction divided by a fraction? Yes, keep, change, flip. So guys, we could set up 1 6 divided by 3 7 like this, right? 1 6 divided by 3 7 we could set up like this. We could keep, change, flip. Hey, guess what? We're going to get the same answer here. 7 over 18. And then we just need to make sure that we put our label on of distance per hour. So that's 7 eighteenths of the distance between the ports per hour. Well, we're going to be on this ferry for a little while then. Because this tells me, is this even half? Is 7 eighteenths more than half or less than half? Yeah, it's less, right? So we're going to be on this ferry for more than two hours. That, that's a long time. 
That might be one of those fairies that has like cars and everything else on it and goes kind of slow. So guys, people do this like in like New York or different cities where like there's water separating a main part of the city from another main part or not even like a city in a, like a city in a different city sometimes. Got to hop on a boat and take the ferry. If we were going to New York City, we would take the ferry out to see the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, that's. Did you like it, or do you not like boats? Yeah, it's at least a boat. If we're going down, I have a. I can swim. All right, so now, before we get out of here, I got a few minutes left, right? So, new vocab that we want to write in our notes. So, I would start a new page or draw a really heavy squiggly line. The constant of proportionality is just a fancy way to say unit rate. But, there is, there is a particular, like, but involved here. So... We're going to say constant of proportionality So I'm going to put that it's also known as the unit rate but we still uh, we still need to put a definition Sorry it's so a unit rate but so, guys, my definition's on the board. You can just write what I have typed up there. I'm going to write the same thing just so it's in my notes. But it's the change in the dependent for the for one change in the independent. So I'm, how I'm going to write that is it's the dependent change. So how we can give a symbol to that is the delta y when... The independent, which is our x, changes by 1. So what that means is when the delta x equals 1. <clears throat> our constant of proportionality is only a constant of proportionality when we have proportional relationships. So I would put a star or highlight your word proportionality and say, well, this only works for proportional relationships. It only works for proportional relationships. Now, we need to review then, well, what's a proportional relationship? Anyone remember one of those things that indicates a proportional relationship? A proportional relationship uses zero, zero as a point. Sorry, I forgot to put the second thing here. Must have been working too fast. And, oh no, I copied it, sorry. So here we go. And I know we're, we're almost that time, but guys, a proportional relationship, we, we can abbreviate with like prop rel, and I know you can't see my notes right now, because it's up on the screen, it's probably nicer up on the screen. A proportional relationship, you should be writing this down, I see some people who obviously aren't, uses the origin which is zero, zero, and is a straight line. I had them the other order up on my screen, but it does not matter.
Now that's for when we're looking at like a graph. So in the situation, if input is zero, what's the output? If the input is zero, Someone said zero. Yeah, the output is zero. So for example, time spent working and money earned. We should go ahead and write that down. So time worked compared to money earned. Guys, if I, if I don't do any work, I don't get paid any money. That? Oh, those are anybody. I just brought down a case, remember? Sorry, Mrs. Goldring's here now. She was asking if, if I'm sharing the stack of boxes that I have in here, and I, I guess I'll share. So, this is probably where we're going to wrap up today, but the problems you're going to start to see in Khan Academy, use different letters for the constant of proportionality. So guys, the last thing I want you to see before you get out here, because if you start working ahead in your homework, this is going to matter is the constant of proportionality is the thing we multiply with the x. So guys, what I would write down in your notes before you leave is when, if we have y equals some number times x, it doesn't really matter what that number is it is your constant of proportionality. <clears throat> Khan Academy starts to call it R. So like, for example, if you have Y equals R times X, that R is your constant of proportionality. Whatever it is, I often use M. A lot of math people use M. So if you ask a sibling for help, they might be like, why aren't we using M? It would also be the constant of proportionality. Doesn't matter. If anybody has any last questions, please hang out and ask those to me. Um, aside from that, that's all I got, or all the time that we have to fit in things today. So take a quick little break. Now hold up. I guess I should probably make the reminder announcement. Who can unmute and tell us what's going on with language arts today? There is... Tell me more, Lily. Yeah, so go to Schoology, check the message from Miss Alley. This doesn't mean the next hour is it, the next hour is yours to goof off. This means you have an assignment posted. Miss Allie's not hosting class because she's not feeling well today. Um, so, I mean, as you guys can probably guess, she's going to get a COVID test. So she's doing that right now. Um, so please do what she's asked you guys to do. The worst thing as a teacher who's not feeling well is to then start trying to do work again and get really frustrated that your students didn't read the directions and didn't do what you asked them to do. Right? So please... Read Miss Allie's announcement and do what she asked you guys to do. If you have any questions about math or language arts, stick around. I'm going to stop recording 